Welcome back to the Night Shift, your safe space for talking about UFOs, UAPs, NHI, disclosure, and anything else your friends, family, and coworkers are sick and tired of hearing you go on and on about. Let's face it, it's been a number of years now. You just haven't let this one go, have you? In fact, you've doubled down. Spend most of your time in the van, watching YouTube videos on your phone. It's gotten out of hand. People have started to notice. So the next time that you're met with a thousand yard stare or glossy eyed expression, eh, just stand up, turn around and walk away because you don't need those people. That's what we're here for. Team Night Shift. Be a part of the most exciting conversation on planet Earth. Aliens. Are they real? Apparently. Are they here? Looks like it. But what are they doing and why? And how does it affect you and me? But that's not why we're here today. We're actually here to uh, talk about James Fox's new documentary, The Program. The trailer just dropped. I'm just now getting to it. I'm gonna watch it. You're gonna watch it with me. We're gonna watch it together. You may have already seen it. I have not. This is my hot take on James Fox's documentary trailer for the program. And we'll talk about it after. 17, the New York Times published a story exposing a secret government program investigating UFOs. That story was kind of a catalyst for a lot of things that have happened since. Members of Congress started to ask questions. Instruments report there is something there. There are flight characteristics that we can't explain. UAPs are unexplained. It's true. They need to be investigated. Here we are having a hearing where just a few years ago, we didn't even acknowledge that these things were real. Do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Absolutely, based on interviewing over 40 witnesses over four years. You're telling me people have come forward claiming firsthand knowledge of craft of non-human origin. That's correct. We have sources who have asserted not only that there have been crashes, but there have been crash retrievals. Do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? Biologics came with some of these recoveries, yeah. Were they human or non-human? Non-human. I'm sitting here today because the American people are being lied to. We are the American government and we are open and we're gonna be open about this. What has been revealed, non-human intelligence exists, non-human intelligence has been interacting with humanity, is only part of the story. The pressure's on. The Pentagon, the CIA, they're gonna have to answer the mail. Some are risking everything. Have you had incidences that have caused you to be in fear for your life? Yes, personally. To uncover the rest. What is being done to verify the assertion that the US government has spaceships of non-human intelligence? in their possession. That kind of revelation unearths people's beliefs. I would go to jail to say things that I've been exposed to in the program. That looks really, really good. Uh, moment of contact was excellent. Um, the phenomenon was excellent. James Fox is an outstanding documentarian. He's a great storyteller. He's obviously deeply emotionally invested in this uh, subject matter. And it shows. It comes through. The, the trailer, for, actually all of the trailers for his movies give me goosebumps. It's just like you watch it and you can feel how serious this subject is. And he communicates that in a, in a way that comes off as very sincere and very human. Um, I think he does a great job of articulating how complex this issue is, but also how deeply it affects people on an individual one-on-one -on -one level. And that really comes through in the way that he tells these stories. I'm very excited to watch the final product and see what is revealed and how he gets into that information. Cause I know there was some controversy about this documentary getting made initially. And I, uh, as I recall, uh, there was some resistance to it getting made at all. And, uh, so I don't know how that affected the final product, but I'm interested to see. Um, I think it's going to help onboard a lot of new people 
people who may have been on the fence looking at the news and paying attention to the subject sort of um, uh, as a side thing. And now it's going to become much more real for those people because this case is going to be made in a very concentrated, uh, focused way. All of the significant events of the last few years are going to be condensed down into one really digestible, entertaining documentary. I think that's going to be huge for this community. I think that, um, in fact, I think ufology or the, the UFO community has been in a underground phase for a while. And I think we can all sort of feel this, right? Like you can tell when something's about to go full blast. I feel like that's about to happen to ufology. It's going to go fully mainstream in a huge way. Um, there is, uh, th there are a bunch of new projects on the horizon. Spielberg's got a new thing that he's working on. Um, of course, Luigi Vintitelli has the project Gravatar, um, multi faceted project, the book, the documentary and the virtual reality experience. Um, that's highly, highly anticipated. And the, uh, there's a new thing on Netflix now for, uh, it says the Manhattan alien abduction. I haven't even watched this yet, uh, but we'll do another video on this. I'm also really interested to see what Hal Putoff has to add to this whole conversation. Hal is one of the most fascinating figures in all of ufology. This is a man who has been at or close to the center of the retrieval reverse engineering program for at least the last 40 years or so. He's worked on research that, has, that is almost mind-meltingly strange. Uh, this, the whole Stanford Research, research Institute project on re, uh, remote viewing, that was Hal Putoff and Russell Targ. Ingo Swan worked with Hal Putoff. So you have this guy who's an expert on reverse engineering, metamaterials, um, uh, the craft, how they work, alternative physics. He even has his own company uh, that works on alternative energy. They're producing some something called the Sapphire Reactor. Um, that's worth its own entire video. It's a little over my head, but it seems very interesting. Uh, and and at the same time, as all this is going on, he's doing he's doing this groundbreaking research on remote viewing and telepathy and uh, the powers of the mind. And it makes you wonder, and it certainly makes me wonder, how much overlap is there? There's got to be a tremendous amount of overlap between consciousness re research, um, the capabilities of the uh, minds to operate in the mental realm, and the telepathic abilities. There must be a tremendous amount of overlap between that and the way the technology around UAPs functions, if that makes sense. I know it's kind of a clunky way to say it, but um, that consciousness, uh, the basic idea is consciousness is somehow fundamental to reality and there can be technology based on that, on that principle. So I, I, I don't know to what extent our current science accepts that, but I feel like that's a pretty reasonable concept. And I get the sense looking at how's history and, and the types of things he's worked on, that there must be a tremendous amount of overlap. Because why else would you be working on all this stuff? Clearly, they're spending millions of dollars or billions. Who knows? That's the other thing. We have no idea how much money has been spent on any of this stuff. So, you know, you have this program um, that exists in a sort of a quasi-military, public-private sort of gray area, I'm sure. I'm sure that there is a uh, tr uh, uh, a mountain of archaic, bizarre legalese that protects all of the people involved and the companies involved, and it's probably just a complete and total uh, snake's nest of uh, just a mess. And into this thing, we have been funneling billions and billions of dollars for decades with no congressional oversight. I think that's the biggest thing, the biggest reveal here that we're learning, especially at this particular moment in the conversation is just how far out of the loop Congress 
is on all of this. And I'm not entirely convinced that uh, the executive branch is all that much into the in the loop as well. I think certain presidents are uh, because of their intelligence community connections and, and history, maybe. But it also seems like everything else in America right now, it's extremely partisan. And uh, I wonder to what extent partisan politics plays a role in which presidents get briefed in on stuff. You know, if you have a bunch of uh, very politically charged people in the intelligence community that feel a certain way about uh, uh, a candidate, do they just leave that person out of the loop? And so this speaks to a much larger question of who's actually in charge, who's making decisions on all this stuff, and how do, how do those people factor in to what happens next? For instance, if they've reverse engineered technology that the president doesn't know about and that Congress doesn't know about, and we have these super weapons or the super technology that is somehow um, out there. And it's in the hands of private corporations with no uh, oversight from Congress. And taxpayer money has been spent on this. That's a, that's a can of worms. So when we have this larger conversation about disclosure, I think at the end of the day, what is going to come out of this is a very catastrophic legal shitstorm that is going to unfold over probably decades. And who knows how it's going to resolve itself, if it can resolve itself at all. You're talking about things that are recovered technology from another world, which can you even, can you even lock that up? Is that even legal? Is that, I mean, I guess it is. We've done it. But um, on what grounds can you defend this thing going on indefinitely? I think that's the big issue here, is that this cannot go on indefinitely. This system, right, this whole situation that we're in, or this situation that we're in, cannot continue. It's too unstable, right? So at some point, something's got to give. It's either going to break, and there's going to be some catastrophic leak from within, which you could say we're already kind of seeing, right? Or there's going to be um, uh, a critical mass of political pressure that's going to cause this thing to break wide open. Or you're going to have someone else in another sphere of influence, a different country, do something first, and they'll demonstrate the technology before we do. That's possible. Or you could have a faction within the, the control group, right? Um, which is, a, this is, is kind of what we see happening now. A faction breaks free, and they recognize that uh, there's an opportunity to commercialize this technology, at least some of it. You're sitting on potentially tens of trillions of dollars worth of value. Limitless value, right? We're at the dawn of a new space race. The next century is going to be all about colonizing the solar system, taking advantage of the vast resources of the asteroid belt, colonizing Mars, the moon. What if we were sitting on technology that could do that, that could go from here to Mars in a matter of days instead of months? The efficiency boost would be worth unlimited money. And I think the people who are trying to push disclosure right now, if I had to guess, understand that. They see an opportunity. There's a window of time where this makes a lot of sense. We are in that window. And if I had to just guess, this is purely my guess, that's what this is going to boil down to. It's going to be one group thinks they can make more money keeping it secret, or they just fear the legal repercussions of it becoming uh, an, uh, open to the public. And the other group says, well, we got to cash in on this sooner or later. And why not now? If it's not us, it'll be the Chinese. It's not the Chinese. It'll be someone else. So um, let it be us, right? And out of all of these different things, I think this is really worth mentioning because it doesn't get talked about enough in this community. I don't think people talk, discuss enough the overlap between the UFO world and the artificial intelligence world. We're approaching, uh, for, from all indications, right? Like, and I'm, I'm just a guy. I don't have any special um, background in technology or, or venture capital investing or anything like that. But I can read. I'm paying attention. I'm looking at the news. What I see is what I was reading about when I read Ray Kurzweil's book, The Singularity is Near, back in the early 2000s, I think it was, or was it late 90s? I don't 
remember how long ago it was. It was forever ago. But at that time, the stuff he was predicting into 2030 was beyond what you could think possible. I mean, it was just out there. And he correctly has predicted all of the things that we're seeing right now. I'm not saying Ray Kurzweil is the only person that you should look at, and he's certainly not like a perfect oracle. He makes mistakes. But by and large, his track record is exceptional for accurately predicting the technology that we can expect to see in a given period of time. And it definitely looks as if we're in, we're well into the beginning of stages of the singularity. If you look at the recent progress in artificial intelligence, Sam Altman just said the other day that we are a few thousand days away from artificial superintelligence. This is a guy who just watches these things do training cycles all day long. You're thinking in days, a few thousand days could be five years, six years, less than 10. It's not long. Artificial superintelligence will be the last invention we ever have to make. After that, things start to recursively self-improve. We get runaway superintelligence. This thing is going to be spitting out Nobel Prize winning papers every 15 seconds. Uh, and it's only going to get faster and it's only going to get better. So how does that factor into this whole conversation? What happens to UFO reverse engineering research with those kind of tools, that kind of power? What happens with our economy? How does that affect uh, what else is going on? So what kind of new world can we expect 50 years from now? Things could look a whole lot different. I mean, way different than even we could possibly begin to imagine today. And I think that's really exciting. So I don't know. It's a complicated story. Uh, the, this documentary is definitely going to open that conversation to a whole new world of people. I hope I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to, um, review it and talk to you guys about it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, and share this video. And Hey, if you're not already a subscriber, do me a favor, just hit the button, subscribe. It only takes a second. It doesn't cost you anything. And it really does help. We started this channel just over a year ago and had less than 400 subscribers. In the last 30 days, we've added over 3,000 subscribers. It's because of people like you that this community has grown to what it is today. And it continues to grow at a very, very rapid clip. I'd love to have you guys be a part of it. If you uh, want to talk about UFOs, you want to talk about UAP, NHI, AI, um, climate change, the whole situation that's going on right now. These are critical times that we're living in. Our world is in crisis. We stand at the dawn of an entirely new age. And apparently aliens are here and they've been here for a long time. So it's a wild time to be alive and it's a crazy conversation to be having. I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll be a part of the conversation. Thank you in advance. Don't forget to go to teamnightshift.com. You can get on our mailing list. You can click on the link for the Discord. You can join us there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Till then, keep looking up.